the moment you're on stage and you're like, okay, I don't have any, any time to stall anymore. Like people are watching, I need to start singing. You zone out and you're in a different world. And for me personally, I don't like, maybe different, different artists have different ways uh, of, of kind of absorbing it. I absorb the, uh, the incredible feeling after everything's done. Mm. In the moment, it feels to me like these people have um, gotten up, left their homes to come and you know, listen to me. And I owe them a good performance. The Nobody's Famous Podcast. All right, guys, and we are back on the Nobody's Famous Podcast with an exciting show today. And uh, we got Bruno on the keys and Jinan on the keys as well. And the beautiful Subsonic Studios. I thought you were going to say I'm beautiful. You are. Okay, thank you. Yeah. See? <laughs> Always amazing. Always amazing. And I wanted to say, with the one and the only amazing KK, it's a pleasure to have you, sure. buddy. Thank you, man. Thank you. Um, pleasure to be here. This show has been, what well, you said, four months in the making? Four months. Four or five months, yeah. Let's yeah. hope it's worth it. I'm going to blow it out of the water. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Um, it's... I'm so happy to have you finally. Thank you. Bro. Believe it or not, if if it did work out previously, it would have been on Zoom and would yeah. have had the same effect. It's meant to be. It's meant to be. And I'm going to jump right in here, you know, ask you the first question. Uh, no, no, we're not going to wait. And let's go. Let's do it. You said KK makes music for nighttime. Yeah. What a way to sell yourself. Let's just put it that way. Okay. Um, how would you expand on that as an elevator pitch to, you know, to a potential record label? Yeah, so um, I'm I'm uh, like as as KK or the person behind KK whose name will not be revealed. Um, I'm a nocturnal. I'd say I'm a nocturnal being or person. Like I I love the nighttime. So my music is I think uh, ideal for these late night three a.m. two a.m. kind of drives. I try to make uh, you know sad music, but music that you know when you're alone driving back home, you know you might listen to it, remember an old relationship, remember something, you know. Have a little moment to yourself, you know. Some tears might be shed. Um, so yeah, usually the night. Who, I mean, who wants to cry during the day, right? So crying is always going to be part of the equation. I mean, for now, yeah, for now. For now. I mean, emotions, right? But <laughs> um, Listen, I I present myself, and it's up to the listener to whether they want to be, you know, emotionally affected by it or not. It's their decision. But uh, yeah, I mean, crying is a fundamental part of art i think it is yeah. it is I, not, i embrace it we're not gonna mic drop so early but that was a mic drop moment thank i just you, want to say you, thank and um you 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 also said that you bring out the subconscious emotions in your songs yeah uh which has like this um feelings from the you know residual feelings from past experiences and all that how do you balance the pain with the creativity to make such something beautiful this is uh starting like a, it's a very dark episode right Guys, I'm also like a happy person. Um, how do I balance the, the, the pain? And sorry, what was the second part? Like, how do you balance the pain with the creativity to make Yeah, so like listen, uh, like my, my songs have had a consistent, uh, consistent sub, uh, like substance matter, which has been more or less kind of relationships and stuff like that. But I don't come into it going like, hey, I want to write about this instance. Um, usually it's like when I start writing, I mean, it's going to sound cliche, but it's like I pick up my phone. Back then it would be a pen. Now, 2021, it's a phone. Um, and I start writing what uh, the beat kind of inspires in me. And sometimes it's about something that's happening in my life right now. Sometimes it's about something that happened earlier. And sometimes it's not about a specific thing. It's, uh, it's uh, maybe emotions, like you said, that are kind of like dormant from previous experiences that get activated, you know, inspired by certain uh, beats and stuff like that. But usually the if there's any song that has pain associated to it, the moment I've written the song and released it, um, that pain is long gone. Uh, and maybe like the, the song is like maybe the last um, piece of the therapy jigsaw puzzle. Um, once it's gone, I, I should be okay. And by the way, my last song released, um, you know, in, in the time that we're talking now is gone. Pardon the pun, but I'm... Nice. <laughs> well, we're starting off strong, by the way. <laughs> starting off strong. You know, with, I with told jokes, you, lame jokes are jokes and dark, kind of fortunate dark, uh, part humor. of my being. It, listen, man, you know, let's get some jokes in. So, right. so feel free, guaranteed. You know? um, and and apart from your musical expertise, um, 
what do you think people will take away from this show? So I think um, like something I get often is like um, there's a bit of mystery and mystique with with so far what I've done. Uh, one is obviously so I go under the artist name KK, so that alone has a bit of mystique. But at the same time, I'm not super out there uh, in terms of like visuals and stuff like that. Part of it is intention and part of it is not. Um, and I haven't done so many interviews like this. So I think this will be one of the first few times people will see the person behind the, uh, the art. Um, so they might, they might, you know, now when they're crying to my music, they might also laugh at, you know, remembering some of my lame jokes after they listen to this interview. Who knows, to be honest. Surprises are, are definitely incoming. I think they need to maybe listen to the song, cry, and yeah. watch the show, laugh a bit, and then listen to a song. Sounds like cry. a hell of an emotional roller coaster. And it sounds like a lot of work too, but yeah, but it's 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 a nice experience, unique, right? Indeed. And and uh, do you like when somebody might see this is like a cliche question, but I want to ask it. Tell me. And do you like when people compare you to another artist like Justin Timberlake and stuff? Of course. I mean, it's uh, I'm not one of those that's gonna tell you like, uh, no, I'm like. I'm the guy, don't compare me. I mean, end of the day, art and music in general is um, whatever you hear today, whatever you see, like movies, TV shows, it's um, inspired by previous works. So for me to come and say, no, I don't like it, I'm KK, don't compare me to Justin Timberlake. I mean, you're talking about one of the most successful singer-songwriters uh, ever. And he is the person that I, I'm most inspired by for a lot, a, lot of, you know, a lot of reasons, number of reasons. So no, I take, I mean, I take pride in that. Uh, if I mean, it's only happened a few times, but really, when I thought that was like uh, I, uh, the standard. Yeah, I get, I get like a few different artists. Sometimes I get Justin Timberlake. Sometimes I get Justin Bieber. Sometimes I get Zayn Malik, who are all like incredible names. Um, and Budsy is one of your influences. Yeah, right? yeah. So let's hope one day I'll I'll reach the success that they've reached. We we hope that too, man. I Thank mean, you. this is um, you know, this is a moment for for us to showcase your talent and your voice and and the ma man behind the music absolutely which is my next question actually tell me is oh. you know who is kk who is the man behind the music Oof. that's see that's a new question i like that i haven't uh, i haven't we don't want to talk all music so yeah yeah i haven't gotten that question before the man behind the music um i'd say i'm a pretty simple man like um i mean even in relation to my music but not fully in relation to my music um my my journey with music and outside of music has been, I, I don't want to say average Joe to kind of like remove any kind of like inspiration from it, but I'm I'm a regular person that stumbled into you know music, um, a passion that kind of like you know passion merged with opportunities and doors to kind of like activate that passion, and um, so I mean in a in a nutshell the man behind um, you know KK is just a. Um, uh, a man who's found his outlet um, of expression and it just you know happens to be music for me i think everyone has their own outlet of expression um for me it's music you know for others it's uh, it's film for some it's just speaking you know and some people like to be left alone it's it's different forms of expression but yeah i'm a, I'm a regular man who chose music as their outlet of expression and and uh, earlier you also were you said you were like more shy, introvert at yeah. school and yeah. your mom was, you know, pushing you yeah. in a way. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So as a kid, like in, in high school, I was um, a really, really shy kid. Um, even up, I mean, up until the end of high school. And then um, during university, I don't know what happened, but um, I kind of developed some extroverted, um, you know, attributes or characteristics which was a good thing. And um, so I label myself as like an extroverted introvert, but people don't like that, you know, because I, when people meet me, they think I'm like a full on extrovert because I'm like loud, outspoken and whatever. But I do like my alone time. I, you know, I, I'm a musician. I, I obviously love to perform and stuff like that, but I also equally love being at home, you know, alone, me, Netflix, you know, the absolute. Oh, reason. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah hey listen and, the show is not politically correct uh, somehow so yeah so it's uh, i don't know what you know you can say that yeah, yeah yeah perfect so so yeah it's um it's a combination you know you have to have a balance between the you know different kind of sides of it yeah because um you know i i also got told that a bit and and you're right a lot of people want their own alone time it's not yeah. doesn't mean if you're an extrovert means that uh you have 24/7 yeah you have to be out and stuff and and i kind of had the same 
kind of comments as you is I always felt that I was introverted, so I couldn't like uh, speak or you know do something. And here like you this. are. I mean, hosting your own podcast. Well, well, talk I, about talk about a one eighty. Yeah, true, <laughs> but not 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 on stage yet. So I still yeah. have kind of that that uh, those issues. But but you're right. And then I I, I got I mean, that. So do I. I mean I mean you're you're talking about not on stage in terms of like a podcaster or an MC. I mean, for me as well as a performer, like um, I still obviously do get butterflies when I, you know, go on stage. I, I mean, I haven't performed on stage too often, but it's a process. I think if if you if someone comes and tells you, um, I started something and then like the next day I'm like totally comfortable with it, they're probably lying or or trying to hide an mm. insecurity because it's a process, whatever it is. So I mean, kudos to you. This is a move that I mean, I think. Sorry, I'm gonna flip it on you for a second. Um, just to give you the praise you the deserve. The guests love to do that. So Yeah, I mean, just to give you the praise you deserve, a lot of people um, reach a point where they're like, okay, I want, I'm interested in something. I want to do it. But then the way to do it is there, but they're like, mm, not sure if it's worth it, whatever. So in terms of the podcast scene, because globally the podcast scene is still in, in its infancy. Um, so in the Middle East, it's even more kind of like um, young. So the fact that you're you know already doing something and consistently and whatnot... Uh, yeah, kudos to you, man. Awesome, buddy. That's mic drop moment number two, I would say. <laughs> and did you have any other talents apart from singing? Like when you were growing up, did you notice you had different paths to take or did it just click? I mean, in terms of talents, even music was a talent that I, I kind of dis- discovered later on. No, like, listen, I, I used to sing a lot during high school, but there's a difference between enjoying something and realizing that you have a talent. So... For some, for the most part, when when you realize you have a talent, it's usually because others realize it as well. So maybe why it took a longer time is I kept it to myself for a long, long time. Being introvert, you know, kid that I was, the moment I started expressing it and you know putting out covers and whatever, I started getting some feedback. And at that point, I kind of realized, okay, there might be something there. But in terms of like other talents, I mean, I enjoyed playing football. I wasn't the greatest at it, um, which for like North Americans is soccer, uh, but it's actually football. Um, Poetry was something I used to get into when I was in school. Actually, I mean, I'll, I'll say something. If you find my Facebook, which you're not going to find, because here I'm KK and my Facebook, I'm someone else. But if you do manage to find it, um, somewhere in Facebook, there's like a weird random feature. That I don't know why it's still there called Notes. Oh, yeah. I remember, remember notes? notes, man. So back then I was, I, was, um, I was in a relationship, whatever, in high school. And I don't know why, like... I, I wanted to write poetry in public on Facebook on notes, and it was horrible. It was trash. You know, there, like there was a poem called "Happiness," and basically, each line was like starting with the, the like letter of the word, like H is for whatever. It's like you talk about cringe cam. This is this this falls under that. So welcome to the cringe cam. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I think I think like singing is probably the um, the main one if you want if you want to talk uh, traditional talents. Mm. And I, I noticed from from your music. From, I want to get into the music later and yeah. stuff. But uh, apart before that, and you can you can answer musically or however you way you want. But you're a you're a like a work ethic guy. I can imagine you're a, you're like a guy. You know you have a process. Yeah, it shows in the video clips. But I think it's the same in your day job. Am I right? Yeah. So um, I mean, I I don't want to toot my own horn. Um, so I'll leave that up to people. But in, in, in terms of like work ethic and commitment, um, so to, to kind of like remove any glamour that, that people might have, uh, you know, incorporated, I do have a day job. I'm not a full-time musician. Uh, music does not pay my bills at this, at this moment. Um, hopefully one day, you know. But in my day job, um, for me, it's like I have like a, a couple of kind of principles I live by, you know, you know, whether it's in my job or in life in general. One is accountability. If you're given a task or you know you have a responsibility, it's important for someone to go like, okay, I know that ultimately I'm accountable for it. So when I mess it up, um, ultimately I know that I'm accountable. So that kind of like ties in and, and enables like a, you know, a work ethic that's built on like commitment and making sure that everything is done and whatnot. And then that trickles down into music as well. Obviously it becomes part of your DNA and part of your persona. And do you think, uh, w- what does your family think about, you know, um, how you are, with your day job versus the music, what do they think about? Yeah, your... so for you to kind of not convince, but for your family to see the bigger picture that you have, because you have a vision, right? Because that vision is built on passion. But your family are thinking your well-being, practicality. You need to start while you're somehow balancing your day job, 
Um, and then when they see results, so by results, I mean, you know, when songs come out and music videos come out, when they see other people kind of like, you know, praising the songs and whatnot, they're like, okay, maybe, maybe this is doable, you know, maybe this can happen. So with my family, I mean, they've always been supportive, um, but they're also of the notion that, you know, probably don't drop off, you know, drop everything and just go into music full on. And I, I mean, I agree with that because for me, I, 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 I look at it from a, from a point of like stability needs to be there because ultimately my day job is enabling my music. Like the money I'm getting from my day, day job is, is what's funding basically my, you know, my songs, my videos and whatnot. Um, so both play an important role, but the ultimate uh, goal, and it's a short-term goal because um, I'm not a you know, very young person, um, and I'm I'm also a realist. The short term goal is is for music to be for me to be fully dependent um, on music itself. So let's see. Yeah, it's I mean it's a sacrifice you make, right? Absolutely, sacrifice you make, and and uh, it's it's funny sometimes to to say that always the external val- validation is required for someone to realize the vision. But yeah, such as such as the scenario, and especially when it comes to parents, people who, who care about you. That's how it kind of works. So oh, we do rely on it some somehow, at, at least at some point. Um, before I jump right into the music, I have a segue question, mm-hmm. which will take us there. Um, and because you made this shift from an introvert to extrovert and all these things, I mean, c- explain the feeling of when you go up on stage and, and then you just, this thing, that this feeling that you can't live without. Because it just happened once yeah, and then it's, that's it. It's um, it's so hard to put into words because whatever you whatever you think like right before getting on stage you know what if i mess it up whatever whatever but the moment you're on stage and you're like okay i don't have any any time to stall anymore like people are watching i need to start singing you zone out you zone out and you're in a different world and for me personally i don't like maybe different different artists have different ways uh, of of kind of absorbing it i absorb the uh, the incredible feeling after everything's done. Mm. In the moment, it feels to me like these people have um, gotten up, left their homes to come and you know listen to me, whether intentionally or they happen to be there. And I owe them a good performance. So I treat it almost like not a job. I don't want to. I don't want to remove the kind of like you know. It's it's obviously something I enjoy to death. But it's ultimately you don't want to mess it up, not just for yourself, but for the people that are there uh, to show them the appreciation they deserve. But it is the most phenomenal feeling, you know, for me ever. And the the second most phenomenal feeling is, you know, going into the booth when when creating a song. But live performances are the reason why musicians make songs. And you know, the the reason that you said that you want to do the give the best performance that's basic presentation skills. It's absolutely part of. I've said it on the Slam Sandwich podcast. I've said it before on the show. That's the absolute reason why i think you know when you want to go up on a presentation and you get nervous that's why you're nervous because you want it to be the best that it can be for the people exactly and i was that was told to me in a class a study abroad and we had a class and that's what that's what he said one of the things that really stuck with me i mean what's like 80 years later yeah. stuck with me that you know you're nervous because you want people to you want to give people the best you know you're wasting their time otherwise exactly and that is a valid you know a valid uh, pressure point and when you come to write a song, how is it different from other artists? Or is it different? I think, I think it's safe to say that different artists have different ways of approaching it. For me, um, I've tried different approaches. I've tried writing you know, songs from home, you know, and then coming into the studio and whatever. But, and I, we've done that for a few songs. But ultimately, the thing that has worked best um, has just been coming in. Um, so I've you know, after having really developed a kind of style that, we, you know, we have a chemistry and whatnot, coming in and it's almost like a, it's a magical kind of like two, three hours where we go from scratch, like nothing. Um, he's conducting the beat and he's, you know, building up the beat. While he's building up the beat, um, I start writing melodies, lyrics, whatever. And then we reach a point where like we come together, like two hours in, you know, two and a half hours in. And it's almost like in, in, and again, I'm not tooting my own horn, but almost like two to three hours, we go from nothing to a, a finished product. And it's, it's, it's so spontaneous. It's not structured, but it's worked. And that's really how I, that's, that's, that's how we've, uh, we've written so far. And it's, it's, uh, it's gone well. And I don't think I really plan to kind of change that approach, but 
I think different. You know, some artists can you know open their notebooks, write write some lyrics without even knowing what the beat's gonna be, and then try to fit it in. For me, I I almost get inspired by the beat, mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah. and then I work from from then you know from that point. I'm gonna ask you about uh, Ryan for sure, and before that, um, you know, there's the typical question: What are your musical influences and all this kind of stuff? Mm-hmm. I want to ask you actually: Who is influenced by your music? Oh, that's a wee high, a wee sarah, tooting my own um, horn <laughs> again, tooting my own. Uh, um, who's influenced by my music? I mean, listen, I'm not gonna say a specific name, because um. I'm pretty I'm pretty new to this but there have been some instances and for me these instances are like the reason why I kind of like their affirmation as to why I do what I do I've had some like DMs from people I don't know like a guy in South Africa um a girl in Saudi Arabia who have for whatever reason you know felt a connection to my music and from that connection felt comfortable enough to ask me for like you know, certain like advice and like, how did you reach this point? What do you do? You know, blah, blah, blah. If I'm in this scenario, what do you think I should do and whatnot? So when that happens, I'm like, okay, I guess it, it, like, there's some level of inspiration that's kind of trickling down to them. So, I mean, that's phenomenal. The, the more that, that can happen, it's, it's such a fulfilling feeling knowing that because you took a step and you decided to do it and, you know, do it publicly and be out there that you're actually influencing and Maybe like someone is questioning, should I do it? Should I not? And if you can help them lean towards the yes, I mean, it's it's uh, it's priceless. Yeah, just to be able to push them over the edge, and yeah. it's 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 a shame that it sometimes how it feels easier to 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 tell them to do that when you've done it yourself. But such is sometimes the power of of being in that position and and giving some of that power back to to people who might be you know. Yeah, I think it's a responsibility um, because. Like for me, when when people ask me about KK, I tell them, listen, at some point there was no KK. And the, mm-hmm. I, I never thought I'd go into music. I never thought this would be something I'd, I'd be doing. And I always try to revive that person, the person before having met Rayan or thought of music, because it's that person that you're inspiring. Like a lot of these different people, um, whether, wherever they are in the world, they can be you know, the the form of themselves, whether musically or whatever, that they thought they probably will not be. But the best way for them to understand that it's possible is to see a person who was like them. And I don't mean like was like them, like now like elite and they're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean like um, was a person that had a passion and thought mm, maybe it's not going to turn into something. For them to see an example of that happen um, is will kind of like help and should inspire them to kind of like go for it. And yeah, it's it's just like, it's it's um, it's the way things go. You need sometimes you need visual references to understand that this is possible. That was hey, pretty no. good. That was pretty good. I'm telling you, it's pretty good. No cringe cam here. No, it's not. Not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Um, and um, so, you know, since we talked about how you know you bring a lot of the emotion into yeah. into your songs, I personally like I used to write before the show before oh, right. uh, before with Alex. I used to I have a blog. I mean, it's still up there. I, I don't okay. write, but. Um, you know how you talked about how it's a therapy and you know, it's therapeutic to write and stuff and that happened to me actually um you know i ha- i wrote about a, p- a painful experience okay and and it kind of as you said you know that's the last step it kind of helped me as well um but why do you think like an artist has to always explain that why can't a song just be a song sometimes i mean i think a song is is sometimes a song i think it's uh, that's the thing about like for instance, the genre that I that I that I'm in, which R&B, alternative R&B, um, you're writing about an experience, um, but sonically it also needs to sound good because not everyone listening is gonna listen because they're like, I relate to that, like that makes sense. Some people just want to hear a good song, so um, that's the biggest challenge, by the way, and it's a challenge I'm learning to overcome by meshing the two. By keeping the the you know the the substance there, and if people want to delve into the lyrics and it, it could affect them, it's there. But at the same time, the production, the the melodies, the hooks and whatnot have to be catchy because music is also kind of it's not just an escape; it's also a form of recreation. Like some people like to listen to music because music sounds good, you know. Um, so it's a it's a combination of both. But for me, um, be it because it's R and B or whatever it is, I I. I could never be the person that's like, 
you know, writing a song about um, apples, oranges, and, you know, Barney the Purple Dinosaur and like a bunch of different like random things and going like, here's a song. Um, I like to have a message in my song. Now, whether a person will absorb it or not is ultimately up to them. And that is the, you know, that's the beauty of music is it's you come in to the studio writing it for a specific purpose, but people interpret it in, in, in the way that makes sense to them. For some people, like my, my, like my latest song now when we're filming is Gone. And Gone is basically, when someone asks me like what it's about, sorry if I'm jumping the gun, um, it's about a relationship that's past its expiration date. But it's up to people to absorb whether it's a romantic relationship, or friendship, or you know, relationship between family members. Yeah, you leave it open like Inception. Yeah, and I, exactly. Great movie, by the way. It is. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 a, it's almost like teamwork, you know? The artist does half of it, the consumer does the second half of it. And that's when the full picture kind of becomes the full picture. That's amazing because what I like about it is I think you did you did kind of in a way strike this balance. Like I'm I'm you know I want to challenge you as well. I'm not gonna just agree with everything you're saying, but I think please uh, you did strike a balance, especially with with uh, get along and gone. There is if you because that was kind of like leading to my next question is if you actually because you are detailed in the way that you write the lyrics. If you actually listen, then you're like oh okay. I can I can feel that there is there is a pain in it, but the melody it's the you know the balance with some yeah. of the songs nowadays you know it's always like melancholic but you're like I actually like this yeah let me you know take a hit as they Absolutely, say yeah. but um but that's I think that's you did strike a balance but as you said um you're doing you're de- you're not you're just you're leaving the work for somebody else to kind of fill in the blanks which is I think it has great. to yeah it has to be at some point um I know people ask you this a lot. Uh, about about your relationship with Rayan, mm-hmm. the you know your producer, yeah. Um, you know, tell us you know tell us a bit about that. Something we don't know. I'll tell you actually how it, it came together. Not a lot of people know this. Um, it came together in a very average Joe kind of way. It came together because I'm working at a company, and one of my colleagues happened to be at the time his girlfriend, um, now his fiance, and. You know, she told me a couple of times, like, by the way, my producer, uh, my, my boyfriend's a producer, blah, blah, you like to sing. Because I, I used to sing in the office. Uh, you know, I'd walk around 6 p.m., 7 p.m., just belting out stuff. I had people, Perfect. like, shouting at me, like, you know, get, get out of here. I want to focus, but got to do what you got to do. So she, Gone. Gone. Get along. <laughs> get along. I see what you Cringe cam see? a bit. Yeah, it's yeah. a bit cringe cam. <laughs> okay. For, for basically... Um, at that point, I had the mentality of some of these people that I might be inspiring today that, ah, come on, like, what's going to happen? You know, like, like I'm not going to re- release music. Like, let's be, let's be serious, you know? I'm going to go down this typical traditional route. I'm, I'm at a job. Let me just focus on, you know, doing well that job, you know, eventually getting married, blah, blah. Um, but anyways, long story short, I met up with him. When I met up with him, and honestly, like, I say this every time, you know, when, when someone asks me, when I when I met him for the first time, so when I saw him for the first time, he embraced me as if he'd known me for like 10 plus years. And every artist that works with Rayan will tell you the same thing. Before his actual production capabilities and his actual technical skills, as a person, he puts in incredible effort to understand who you are as a human being, what your motives are, you know, what your strengths are, your weaknesses. And he tries to kind of like... Um, Put your best version out there, whether musically or, you know, whatever it is. So a lot of artists go there to record songs and end up sitting in a therapy session because he's just so good at listening, but also, you know, speaking and telling you, you know, what could be done and whatnot. So I met him and I played him a song that I had written at home because I'm like, if I'm going to meet a producer and do original music, which come on, it's not going to happen. I'm like, let me let me see if I can write a song. I, you know, I played him a song that I had written and, and recorded. And at that moment, he's like, get into the booth. And that's the moment I realized that get into the booth is like probably the golden line that an artist can hear because the satisfaction you have, you know, when, when you know you're recording and, and your sound, like similar to the setting we're in right now, like your sound is coming out like crystal clear, like high res, because before that, when I do covers, like I do them on my phone or whatnot, like horrible sound, right? So did the song, whatnot. And then he started producing it in front of me and I was like blown away. That was the first time I'd sit with the producer like, I never really understood, you know, what production is. I'd never seen it firsthand. So I'm just sitting there like a kid as he's working, he's working, he's working. And then he sends me the song. And I listened to that song 
So that song was called um, Grey. Never going to be released. But in, 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 the, in the week, yeah, I mean, it was just a demo. In the week between the first time I met him and then the second time I met him, I listened to that song easily 200, 300 times. Because I was like, I can't believe there's a song on my phone of me singing that sounds like crystal clear. It sounds production. like this, yeah. yeah. It sounds as if like I'm, I'm an artist. Like a pro- it sounds like this, exactly. And I was like blown away. I'm like, you know what? If nothing happens, at least I have this. At least, you know, I was so happy about it. But then we met again and the rest is history. That was like early, early 2019. Released my first song, you know, November 2019. And we've been working together ever since. It's, um, it's such a random story, but Again, it goes back to your point of like things happen in the time that they probably should happen and they happen for a reason. So yeah, it's, uh, it's beautiful. Rayan, get in the booth. <laughs> oh, he's Touché. next. Touché. You know, we should, yeah, because uh, for him to be that, I think that's, that's great. Uh, it's a testament to his, um, his ability to understand Absolutely. Um, an artist before even just talking about the music, which is great. Um, I'm going to jump to some, uh, some uh, bonus questions. Let's go. KK. And uh, in, in, in one of your interviews, check this out, Bruno, huh? In one of your interviews, you said you'd love to start a podcast one day. That is true. Okay. <laughs> so I found it. I caught you. You're on the spot right now. Several questions, please. You do your research, by the way. I'll give you that. Yeah. Well, you have to read between the lines, buddy. You know? Cool. Um, why haven't you started it yet? Okay. Is it going to be about music? Uh, why a podcast and not something else? And why haven't you started it yet? Okay, so um, is it going to be about music? No, um, not not really. Why do I want to start a podcast? I mean, I don't know if you noticed, but I, I, I have a perception between like my friends and my colleagues. I talk a lot. They, they, they say, I send the longest voice notes you will ever wow. get. Wow, we have a couple of friends who will hate that, by and the I, way. And I, and I know some people, like friends and, and colleagues, that the moment I, I know a client. So there's a client in Saudi. This is a client, you know, I work in a PR agency, it's a client paying us millions and whatever. Reached the point where I became like a practical joke of like, I wonder when KK is going to, you know, send another voice note because I'm a voice note guy. So I don't know. I enjoy watching podcasts. I watch the Joe Budden podcast, which is like hip hop driven and whatever. And I, I, I think, I think I would be in my element in it. I think I'd enjoy it. And the biggest inspiration or the biggest motive is podcasters are in a very kind of like valuable position where they get to meet so many people from different backgrounds and different stories. So inspiration is coming in through the door every day. Um, and I think that's a beautiful luxury. Why I haven't started it yet? I mean, for me, it's, um, I, the juggling act is really not my thing. Like I'm trying to focus kind of my efforts into music right now. Um, but who knows? I mean, along the line, if, if things make sense, um, we'll do, I'm, I'm that kind of guy. For me, it's like, I want to do something, but I only do it if things make sense. Um, and like get along with Michelle happened that way. It wasn't planned. It, it happened very organically and spontaneously. So, yeah. Well, yeah, you should take your own advice, by the way. I'll try to. <laughs> and and I, I, did, um, I did have a question of, uh, about get along is, is, is um, how was that, how was creating that like? That was the, um, the, the creation of get along was the single uh, most enjoyable experience I've had in music so far. For one, for one main reason is that um, the moment I kind of like was in the studio with Rayan, I'm like, Michelle would sound good on this. And I sent her the demo and she was like, okay, I'll jump on that. From that, I think it was like June, July, until we released the music video in November, Michelle was incredible. She worked with me on, on the song, the music video, everything in between, as if we were like 50-50 partners in a, in a corporation or whatever. Every day we'd have discussions um, and and. Sh- like sometimes I'd have strong opinions and she'd be like, ah, maybe not. And I love that about her. It's, she's very blunt, straightforward, like Noam Jamale. Um, and it felt when you're doing something collectively, it feels nice. You know, like if you think back to like high school or whatever, if, usually the, the, the moments you remember are like team projects because you're like the highs and the lows, you experience them with other people. And us as human beings, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert or whatever it is, um, human connection is important. Fe- understanding that someone else feels the same way about something is, is like a huge gratification. So Get Along was an amazing experience. I think when I released it, um, it was the best song I'd released to, to, that, to that day. And then I released the music video. And for me, that was the biggest revelation because if you told me a year into me doing music, I'd do a music video. As a person who is, I, I'm, I'm 
insecure to an extent, you know, like I wasn't thinking I'd, I'd really do a music video, not, not too soon. But uh, we both looked at each other at some point when we did the song and we we're like, this is a music video. This sounds to me like a music video. We never planned it. We we're like, but we have to do a music video. We started talking to videographers, blah, blah, blah. And we ended up doing a music video. So it was a magical experience from start to finish. And uh, me and Michelle will collaborate again for sure. That's uh, exclusive. Oh, wow. Exclusive. If that counts. If that counts uh, as one. Dropping a lot of Easter <laughs> eggs in this one, I'll tell you that for sure. So moving on, I, I found out about the podcast, but I also found that you wrote that you said you wanted to open a restaurant. Yep. And people can vouch for me. Those who know me, they know that I love food. Some people will say, yeah, you order too much, you don't eat. Sorry. Um, so honestly, what food would it be? And I would definitely would like to, you know, maybe collaborate, Ooh, be a tasting, why not? soft we opening. Can, maybe we can create like a, you know, podcast please, restaurant hybrid please where you come in you know you have a meal please but at the same time you're watching like a live podcast please done um, sold yeah i mean why would i want to who doesn't want a restaurant like the idea of like being at a point where you can have your family and friends over at the restaurant just sounds better than everything else like uh, over a good meal and whatnot what type of food i don't know why whenever i think opening my own restaurant i think like pizzeria kind of like mm, italian yeah, yeah even though it's not per se like my favorite kind of cuisine but rustic kind of place like that uh, see so you, ha you have thought about it then i have i have no that's gonna happen one day a podcast will happen too it's just timing like how about like the I'm, podcast I'm, in the restaurant i think i think that makes a lot of i don't think anyone's ever done it you know trailblazers that's for that's free we are <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i mean timing timing is everything but why also I want to, you know, open a restaurant. I, like, like you, um, we obviously share this. I love food. I think, I think most people will say they love food. Yeah, yeah. But for me, food and sleep are like luxuries. Because <laughs> I, yeah. I don't get enough of the latter. Um, but yeah, man, I love food. And it's a problem sometimes because, you know, you got to maintain a proper diet. So Yeah, for sure, for sure. But I think you should, uh, you should be ready for the challenges that a restaurant will will uh, I mean, present itself to you, you know, um, food yeah, industry, I mean, man. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a nightmare from, from what I, uh, from what I hear. But I mean, who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe not like a classical restaurant, you know, if I end up living on an island in like a hut, I mean, maybe I'll just like you know, go out, you know, with whatever the islander on a canoe, fish some, whatever, tuna, but yeah, whatever, roast it over the fire, blah, blah. Still, that's still almost a restaurant, like a micro restaurant. Who knows, man? Who knows? It's just the idea of sharing, you know, food with people, sharing the love, um, and seeing smiles on their faces. That might sound like a politician, huh? Yeah, but wait, yeah. It's, it sounds like you're like a music artist. The same thing. Yeah, you know, getting on stage. Music artist, stuff. politician. See how I Damn. left it? There hasn't been one yet, so. That is true. That slot is Tra open. Trailblazing today. <laughs> <laughs> too much today, too much. Um, before I go to the, um, the final segment, yeah, KK. Okay, okay. Is there something that you want to talk about? Like, is there a topic that you like you want to discuss? I mean, not a topic, but um, if if someone has has reached this point of the episode, I I want to stress on this point. I know I brought it up earlier, but I want to stress on it, and maybe this is me being serious for a second. Is that um, I I really want people to understand this. Like, I never thought any of this was possible, and. You know, some people will look at what I've done and go like, wow, you've released eight singles, whatever, whatever. For me, I think I haven't done much yet, but I, I know why I think that because I'm where I am. But from where they are, having not maybe done it or having not acted upon their passion, it's like, wow, you've done that. And I really want to kind of emphasize to those people that there is no difference between me and you. The only difference is I got an opportunity and I welcomed it. And sometimes... Uh, and for me, that was a blessing. Like I got it on a golden platter. Some people will have to kind of proactively chase it. But it is as simple as, um, you know, acting upon an opportunity. The doors are there. The outlets are there. You can easily go from it being a dream in your head to it being tangible and, and, and something that's out there and being shared with people. So, and, and another thing is it's never too late. Like the music industry is notorious for... Um, the kind of like principle that if you want to be successful, start young. Um, and I started when I was 25, which some people might say is young, but in the music industry, it's not. It's typically not young. I mean, you look at Justin Bieber, he started when he was like 12, 13, 14. 
but there are also artists popping these days that have started when they were like 30, 31. So you'd be surprised. So also like to the people that kind of like are, yeah, you know, I get you, but I'm like, I'm 28, I'm 29. It's never too late because music is universal and it's, uh, it's, it, it doesn't matter whether you're singing as a 30 year old, 40 year old, 50 year old, there's always a market for you. There's always people like you that will want to listen to your music. So yeah, go for it is what I'd say. KK, we've reached uh, the end. I know that this is very bad for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, do you see the tears? <laughs> They're about to be shed. Honestly, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been a pleasure. It's been mine, man. And, and my, my, my question to you in this segment is, what, why did you decide to come on to the show? Listen, I'm, and again, this is, not, this is me being very genuine. I'm someone whose, um, my decisions are based on uh, impressions, first impressions. And for me, when I, when I see someone in life, you know, what podcast, someone at work, whatever, um, even Bruno here, like we were talking outside for like 20 minutes about, I've just met the guy. But when, when the person seems authentic to me and their intentions seem to be coming from a good place and I haven't yet met them, um, I think it just, the outcome of it can only be good. Um, some people might listen, some might not, but I think when the chemistry and the energy feels right, I usually try to activate that. And that, you know, goes to also towards like why I work with Rayyan, you know, videography, a lot of, you know, different elements. And at the same time, um, for me, I, I was saying this earlier, I, I praise the fact that you're doing this and doing it consistently because similar to musicians, I'm sure you have your demons where sometimes you wake up and you're like, well, why am I doing it? Or yeah. should I stop doing it? Maybe I could focus on something else. So to overcome those demons and continue to do it is very um you know praiseworthy and for me it's like even if i can introduce five extra people to the podcast i think it's a duty of mine so it's a multi-purpose reason but uh, yeah i mean it's honestly been a pleasure i think uh, I'll, I'll cap on this note from my side because i don't want to you know go too much on the praise but um podcasts in general or interviews there's usually a fine line the ultimate fine line is does it sound like a QA, and a a formal Q&A, or does it sound like a conversation? And genuinely, you've, you've managed to strike the, the, the second part of it, where for, for many times during this conversation, I, I forgot the cameras were on, I forgot there were other people. So, no, I mean, like, kudos to you, bro. And I think it's, uh, for me, I'm honored to, uh, to have been on it, uh, which I consider it's, it's in its early uh, phase. I, th I can see you doing this for years and years to come. So hopefully one day when you're, you know, killing it and you have your own late night talk show and, and whatnot you can play a you know a reel of like you know 2021 so we're talking like whatever and use the kk back. clip i use the kk use the kk clip and give me some you know some of the fame that i that i would probably not get <laughs> <laughs> no you're right about the demons and you're right about um about the fine line between conversation and interview style and uh it is difficult as you have difficult moments in creating your own music and you might have a writer's block and stuff like that you know, it's the same thing over here. And uh, yeah. the premise, which I want to ask you about, is always is always um, a difficult, um, you know, the, the, the definition of the show has changed so much uh, as we move from season to season. And, and well, I thank, for, I thank you for saying what you said. It, it really is uh, just, you know, the beginning of the road. And, sure. um, you know, what, what do you think of the name Nobody's Famous? I think you have one of the coolest podcast names I've ever heard. The moment I saw it on Instagram, I'm like, that is such a genius name. You know why? It's such a genius name because it, it sets the tone. It's like whoever you are, whoever's going to come and sit with me, whether you have 50,000 followers or you know, fifth, you know, 50 or five, whether you work in this field or you, nobody's famous podcast, we're here to meet the human being behind whatever label. And I, it's such a self-explanatory term. So, and by the way, you know, working in an industry where sometimes I work with podcasters and clients who want, you know, podcasts, coming up with a name that's impactful is such a difficult thing to do. So, no, I'd give that an easy 10 out of 10 name-wise. Easy 10 out of 10. Easy. I'm almost jealous that, like, for my future podcast, I won't be able to steal it, but who knows? Maybe I'll assassinate you or something. I'll take it. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm getting death threats joking. now, Bruno. That, that, that's a joke. Getting death threats. At the <laughs> Alex, did you see this? I'm getting death threats now because of the name. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Great like, name. Could you great. not have thought what can I say? Great you know, name. Something less. Thank you, buddy. That's <laughs> that's such a great answer. Um the first I never got an answer where where I was given a death threat. So I thank you for I mean, that. I'm I'm here for first, so 
It is. Welcome. It is definitely. Um, <laughs> I love it. Um, my final final question to you. Okay, okay. Uh, KK, is do you have a question for me? I do have a question for you. I mean, I have several questions for you, but ask you one question. And I'm. I like to put. I like to. My friends will will probably listen to this and go like, "Oh, he's doing it again." But I like to uh, package my questions as scenarios. Okay. So if you woke up tomorrow, and you know you were given a decision between all the things that you do in life, so your job, um, whatever other recreational activities, um, geographically where you are, whatever, 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 um, and then the podcasting stuff. I want to know, ultimately, beyond you know, because we get we get caught up in clicks and views and stuff like that in today's digital you know age. But for you, how do you define impact? And then how do you define impact in the realm of your podcast? And finally, I mean, you said one question. I'm, I'm making it three. I'm cheating. And then finally, um, having achieved this impact, inshallah, which I have no doubt you will, um, how do you see this growing and, you know, you know, growing in terms of like team or growing in terms of projects? And what's your vision, basically? But not just in like a basic sense. What's your vision in terms of like impact, but also in terms of like, breaking out into you know global scale or whatever you want to call it or maybe um we we shift the focus from global and make it like more regional and put more li- so w- what's your what's your kind of like plan or vision for this so elevator that, this, pitch, right? yeah yeah the, the, yeah that this is this is a couple of elevated rides i mean i need burj khalifa for this let's go with the impact one well no I'll, I'll, i can i can answer i mean definitely okay. look um i mean everybody knows this on the show about me that voiceover is my you know my, one of my ultimate kind of goals but yeah, i don't I'm not see surprised. yeah <laughs> i mean but it's not it's not something that i wouldn't uh, i would do only and not do the podcast so podcast is obviously you know um sustaining the show i mean i i say show all the time so sustaining the show is 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 one of my main uh, priorities mm-hmm. um but you know when it comes to the impact it's so difficult because we we um, more or less uh, struggle with traction we struggle with uh, views and you know ultimately you're 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 bringing in somebody um the guests sometimes you get people that are are uh, you know not very well known uh they're okay. well i mean it's it's rel- it's a relative term see it's that's relative. the thing it's it relative it's yeah. relative like that's how we kind of started the premise is like um okay you know if you know somebody who's famous but maybe they're famous to only that group of people so the premise is difficult that is true and uh, you know you start off from a from a very difficult point so so the impact will definitely take time, but through the catalog of seeing people, all these different types of um, uh, guests and the kind of impact that they are making on a platform, you know, all of these things can funnel into a bigger impact. The plan is definitely, I mean, the first step would be, you know, to be, you know, kind of recognized regionally, to be able to have that safe space where people can come and say, you know, you know, it's 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 weird because people are like oh, people some some people ask you to be on the show. I'm like, yeah, but but it's kind of like everybody wants to be heard. I mean, you know, our friend just said it even recently. Everybody wants to be heard, but you give them a platform where you can also understand who they are, but also for them to inspire others. Technically, if they're taking advantage of the show, people are taking advantage of them by listening to them True. and listening. And there's nothing wrong with it's that. It's a two-way exchange. It's a two-way exchange. And why are we going to beat around the bush and yeah. and lie about these things? So, so the impact that you know I hope to make, and and Bruno and Alex and and Haya and Sirar and everybody who's with me, like who working on the show, and Ala, all of us who are working on the show, the impact that we want to make is that you go on, okay. You listen to a conversation that from somebody you you don't even know, mm-hmm. you have no idea about. Maybe you have a, a small idea about. You come in and you listen, and then after finishing the show, you stand up and you say, "Okay, now I'm gonna create something. Now I'm gonna awesome. make uh, something of myself." And I'm not saying that the show should always be the spark for you to do that, but it's kind of like somehow my story in a way. It's somehow. I've been in that position. And yeah. as you said so beautifully, without me having to say anything, um, it's inspiring those 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 people. And I know this all sounds like cliche and all that kind of stuff. It's true. But that's uh, genuinely, it's an impact. Somebody can can uh, come up to me or, or send a text or call or say, you know, this show 
and it happened once somebody was telling me you know i watched the show and it really helped me it, personally it really helped me and um, i know it's all about like helping others and stuff like that i'm not gonna lie i want the show to go places i want it to yeah. be able to mo do more impact than just inspiring people but at the same time i'm enjoying it i, I mean we're enjoying recording you learn something new every day you're enjoying the the excitement of it yeah. getting to know people and if it's only that just that then that's great that's the thing about about you know whether what you're doing or, or with music with me is that ultimately we're doing it because we're enjoying it you know whether the cameras are on or off um it's still something that you as ali would enjoy um so i think in those instances when it's so organic like that it's it's probably the the ones that will bear the most fruit oh yeah um, oh yeah i believe in that wholeheartedly so and it's not yeah, always I mean, that yeah um, of course um I, one more question actually go ahead this is a very cliche question very cliche question but i'm i'm curious if you were to give do you know what i'm going to say if you were to give advice to your 18 year old self and that advice can be for anything in life but you have to basically sum it up in like a sentence or two what would you say just start beautiful beautiful do i do i get a mic drop that's a mic drop that is a mic drop come on i get mic drop right that is a mic drop he has to unplug it two words you used to you didn't even use a sentence it's a sentence if you think yeah. about it yeah it is a sentence so historic moment guys i i get to do a mic drop and not the guest <laughs> so so i get it. to do my drop so there you, you go deserve it there you go just start ladies and gentlemen beautiful i like it that inspired me so congrats kk impact <laughs> it's been a trailblazer of a show wow it's been awesome bruno man i gotta love it i want to sign us off buddy it's That's been an great. absolute pleasure having you on the nobody's famous podcast likewise I'm going to sign us off. Guys, this has been the Nobody's Famous Podcast coming to you live from the Subsonic Studios with the one and the only KK. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, Angami, SoundCloud. And funnily enough, you can also find KK on the same places and his Instagram, KK Music Official. Make sure you check him out because he has some amazing uh, stuff. He has a way with social media. You cannot miss. Um, and it's been awesome, buddy, talking to you. It's been an honor. Thank you, buddy.